This is WENY News. Thanks for clicking on the webcast. I'm Cody Carlson. Here's the latest from WENY News and the Star Gazette. A third fire in five days left two people injured on Sunday afternoon. Just after 12 o'clock, Elmira firefighters were called to a garage fire in Elmira. The flames started in the garage but then spread to a nearby vehicle. Luckily, firefighters were able to stop the fire from reaching the home. One resident of the home was treated at the scene by Irway Ambulance, while one firefighter was taken to the hospital for a shoulder injury. The Elmira Police Department and the West Elmira Fire Department assisted at the scene. Well, new statewide lead testing has found that 14% of taps in New York schools had unsafe drinking water. Nearly 3,000 schools were sampled outside of New York City with more than 256,000 taps. Schools are required to turn off any outlet with lead levels about 15 parts per billion and implement plans to fix the problem. This drinking water test is part of legislation signed by Governor Cuomo back in September. Well, today marks day 15 of the Thomas Clayton murder trial. Day 14 saw continued testimony from the owner of SurfPro. The jury also heard testimony from another New York State police forensic investigator. Now that investigator testified to taking pictures at the home, including of two gas cans in the garage. The investigator's testimony will continue this morning when court reconvenes at 9.30 a.m. You can follow WENY's Logan Wilson on Twitter for updates throughout the case. Well, officials from each of New York's 62 counties are heading to Albany for the annual conference on the challenges that face local government. The three-day conference beginning today will bring in almost 1,000 leaders from around the state. They are expected to talk about problems like funding for 911, the public defender system, and the fight against the heroin and opioid epidemic. Expanding ride-sharing services like Uber and Lyft will be discussed at the conference as well. And the officials will also talk about local governments finding ways to share resources and consolidate services like Cuomo has proposed. Well, and Governor Andrew Cuomo is taking steps to protect the rights of New Yorkers, whether they are from the country or not. He announced the launch of a confidential hotline for New Yorkers to report any family members or friends who are on flights coming back into the state but could be missing or detained. Since Trump's executive order, refugees were detained at airports across the state. The governor believes everyone in New York state should have their rights protected, whether they are from there or not. The hotline will be put up on our website shortly after this broadcast. The hotline will be available 24-7 and will include translation services. Well, do you have questions about President Donald Trump? Well, local political, legal, and civic leaders are trying to answer your questions. The second political pundit night will be held tonight starting at 7.30 p.m. at the Clement Center. Eight speakers, including WENY's political analyst Dr. Jim Twombly, will focus on Trump's presidency during the event. The audience will have a chance to share their own opinions. The event is free and open to the public. Cornell's College of Business now has a new name. It will now be known as the Cornell S.C. Johnson College of Business, and the change was decided on after H. Fisk Johnson, CEO of S.C. Johnson, committed $150 million to the program. According to the university's website, this is the largest single gift to the Ithaca campus and the second largest to name any business school nationwide. This funding comes just one year after the College of Business was launched. Johnson is an alum and holds five degrees from the university. And now here's Craig Flint with a look at today's forecast. Happy Monday, Craig. All right, Cody, good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. Temperatures starting in the teens, a cold start to the day, and there are also some flurries and uh, some snow showers generally over sections of the Finger Lakes this morning and through the course of the day elsewhere, just some flurries, some clouds, intervals of sun. Cold, though, with a high near 25 and a northwesterly breeze. And then overnight tonight, there's going to be a little window of clearing. Now, if that window of clearing stays open longer, we're going to have some real doozies by Tuesday morning in terms of temperature. Right now, the forecast is for a low of around 14 or 15 with some clearing. But it could be colder if you get any lengthy clearing. Your forecast then over the northern tier today. Expect intervals of clouds and sun. And high temperatures here in the 20s. A high of about 25, 26, or 27 for Elmira and Corning with uh, clouds, intervals of sun, a little bit of a breeze. Now early on this Monday morning, I've been watching a squall that has moved through sections of Tompkins County and it is kind of swiping through sections of the county that will drift over the eastern Finger Lakes 
and then through the rest of the day, it's clouds, intervals of sunshine with scattered flurry. Here's, uh, here it is on the last six hours of satellite radar data. You have to look closely, but right there, that little bit of uh, squall right there near Ithaca this morning. That will drift through, and then through the rest of the day, really not much. It's a wintry cold day, temperatures in the mid-20s. Now, this guy right here, north of the international border, is a little area of low pressure. Fast, compact little system that's going to deliver a punch of snow here starting up Tuesday morning. And there will be generalized light snow through the day on Tuesday. In terms of accumulations, ah, like one to two, one to three. Temperatures a little better Tuesday, little better Tuesday night into Wednesday. Scattered snow showers Wednesday mid 30s and likely falling through the day. And then we kind of transition into this cold and wintry pattern for Groundhog Day, whatever that guy says, it's going to be wintry. Temperatures in the 20s on Thursday, struggling in the mid-20s Friday, Saturday, near 30 on Sunday. Now, coming up later Sunday, there's going to be uh, more of a formidable storm somewhere close by. So, how I'm going to play it for now is snow developing on Sunday and probably more like Sunday night. But here's the deal. You got to count the forecast that I made today because I made it at like 4 a.m. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Seven days. Plenty of time to see what uh, happens here with that uh, potential storm late Sunday, Cody. All right, thanks, Craig, for the latest news, weather, and sports. Be sure to watch WENY News at noon, 5, 30, 6, and 11. And don't forget to pick up a copy of today's Star Gazette. I'm Cody Carlson. Have a great day.